Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to BFG's 2020 show and speaker series. Today we have Chris Bates, and he'll be joined by a panel of garden centers. Um, we will have Kate Terrell from Wallace's Garden Center in Iowa, AJ Petiti from Petiti's Garden Center. They have nine locations in Ohio, and Dean Darren from English Gardens in Michigan. Uh, he has six stores. Before we start the speaker series, let's um, go through our show and how to navigate through our show system. Um, you can either hover over the mat, you can search by vendor, category, or booth number, and watch as the interactive map, map helps guide you to your desired location. Once you're in a booth, you can order now, you can view top show deals, view the vendor's website, their catalog, you can get your order history, view vendor descriptions, and view featured items, or you can contact the vendor. Additionally, when you place orders at our, in our pre-show website, you are automatically getting a 2% discount on most things. Direct ships are not included in that. Um, you have made 20, 21 terms on most orders. There are Pallet Alley deals, daily lunch specials, pallet auction, and much more. Okay, let's go to our panel and Chris Beatty's. Chris, thank you. All right, thanks, Joe. And hey, get in on those lunch specials. The roast beef and cheese is awesome. I can vouch <laughs> for that, right, Joe? You hooked me up the other day. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. All right, well, I'm excited to uh, once again get to uh, kind of host and moderate and play cat wrangler to a group of stellar retailers who I'm going to introduce you to right now. And we're going to talk about uh, uh, a little bit about the past, but mostly we're going to be talking about <clears throat> the future of uh, garden, the garden center uh, uh, business. Um, and I want to start with uh, my dear friend, Kate Terrell. Kate, make yourself seen, please. Hey, Hello. Kate. Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. All right, Kate is with Wallace's Garden Center, owner of Wallace's Garden Center, as a matter of fact. And you're in Bettendorf, Bettendorf, Iowa, correct? Bettendorf, Iowa, the Quad Cities. Right, right by the Mississippi River. You used to have two stores. You got smart and pared it down to, to one, which was enough of a challenge this spring, right? <laughs> it was, yeah. October 1st last year we sold, so we're coming up on one year as a single store. There you go. All right, next up, AJ Petiti. AJ, let's see yourself, my friend. There he is. And AJ, you may recognize the last name. They've got a little outfit in, in the Cle greater Cleveland area. Petiti's Garden Center. No pressure having your last name on the sign out front, I'm sure, right? Wonderful every day. <laughs> and, there, and for him, he means it. He's not yeah. feeling any pressure. Nine stores in the metro Cleveland area. I imagine that was a bit of fun this spring. It was a lot of fun this spring, actually. So it started off, uh, it was challenging navigating the waters, but um, I mean, the, the sales and the activity that we saw through May, uh, probably something I'll never see again. It was yeah, this else. is a, this was a, we hope this whole deal was a once in a lifetime experience. At least we've got the experience if we have to go through it again. And last, last but not least, Dean Darren. Coach Dean Darren, as I joked with him earlier. <laughs> about to give us the sports report. Dean, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great, Chris. All right, Dean. Dean is with English Gardens in uh, the metro Det Detroit, Michigan area. Six stores, so a decent-sized little outfit up there. And uh, how was, how was, uh, how was uh, spring for you guys with it six was, stores in, in Michigan, which was a challenging state? Very interesting. Being totally closed down for 32 days and worrying about survival to uh, now having a year that we will never see again <laughs> as far as uh, record sales and profits. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, you guys were a little bit slow to open up. And I know as my job as a, a lowly reporter, I just had to write about it. I didn't have to actually, you know, do it, uh, except, you know, for my home office. And it was challenging to report on some some uh, growers and retailers doing phenomenally well, while others were still trying to convince the, the governor uh, to uh, let us open up. 
and uh, in the end, it worked out pretty well for most everybody. So what we're going we're gonna to talk about today, and I alluded to this at the very beginning, and that is we're going to spend a little bit of time looking back, but not very much because we all lived through it. We kind of know, we kind of know, you know, what happened, um, but we want to know what's going to happen or uh, or how to plan for what might happen. So that's going to be the bulk of what we're going to talk about today. But the first thing I want to ask, and I'll start with, with Kate. So unmute yourself, Kate. You're going to be on the spot here. In a nutshell, and without without dredging up too many awful <laughs> memories, we'll dredge, we'll dredge up a few. Describe the, the COVID experience at your business this past spring. So, well, we were in Iowa, so our governor um, was pretty hands-off with COVID. So we actually ended up closing voluntarily for about three to four weeks um, because we just weren't sure what was going on. And then we reopened in mid-April and um, we opened for curbside and delivery only, which, uh, which was awful and good at the same time. We were selling stuff like crazy, but it was really, really, really hard. And um, so bottom line, I did learn um, probably what I never wanted to admit before is that people will buy plants online um, if you make it possible. So, um, so we survived and um, it really uh, helped me realize who on my team was with me through thick and thin and who uh, really wasn't supporting the team. So that was- yeah, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk some more about some silver linings. That may have been it for you right there. I don't know. Yeah. What about a low light? Was there a, w w when did you hit rock bottom? Uh, I hit rock bottom probably my third or fourth day into uh, curbside and delivery only and basically working harder than I've ever worked in my life for the smallest amount of money than I could imagine. And um, yeah, just thinking how unsustainable it was. Um, all the while having my eight-year-old in my office trying to learn second grade math at the same time. <laughs> and uh, I just didn't know, yeah, looking at a full greenhouse, what on earth, what we were going to do to be able to sell all that stuff uh, in such limited ways. Yeah, and at, at that point in time, we didn't know if there would be a spring. In fact, I remember writing that, that will there be a spring? You know, we had no idea how it was going to wind up. AJ, how about for you, in a nutshell, highlights and lowlights of, uh, of the depths of uh, the pandemic back this spring? So we were very fortunate. We never closed. Um, and we fought hard to, to make sure that we didn't close. So we um, were growers. So we grow 90% of what we sell. Um, in Ohio, if you sell 50% if 50 or more of your revenue comes from pr uh, product that you grow, uh, you're covered by agriculture and agriculture was protected. So we uh, fought two or three different health departments um, that were, you know, just making sure that we were doing the right thing. And we won all three, um, you know, inquiries, I guess, if you want to call it. And so uh, got fortunate there. Um, a low light was, I got a phone call, um, from a friend of mine who said that the governor was in a closed down garden center. And so that was, uh, that would have been tough for us because we'd been treated like retail. Um, and so it was kind of bracing for that. And actually the opposite happened. He came out and endorsed gardening and endorsed garden centers. And so sales were pretty tepid, you know, cause employees weren't sure if, you know, we should be open and, um, you know, customers weren't sure, you know, if garden centers were good or not. And then as soon as the governor endorsed it, um, I mean, sales took off like a rocket. The floodgates opened. Yeah, and it's been like that ever since. So um, it was about two weeks that were a little soft. But after about beginning, middle of April, when that announcement hit, I mean, just boom. And so we've been rocking and rolling ever since. And you don't necessarily expect early April to be good anyway, unless somehow the weather turns, you know, absolutely phenomenal. And I don't think it was good in Ohio in uh, it was, early on. <laughs> it was hor We had horrible weather, actually, through the end of May. Um, and we picked up 40% in April and 45% in May. That's crazy. So, I mean, just big numbers. That is crazy. Dean, how about up in the uh, in metro Detroit area? What was your, your uh, pandemic experience like this Well, <clears throat> very interesting. Um, the governor here in our state closed down basically all retail except for grocery stores and um, um, uh, pharmacies and 
anything to do with the sanitation and safety of your home, repairing your home. So the depot and Lowe's were allowed to stay open. Um, all the chain stores um, that sell everything like a Meyer or uh, Sam's, uh, 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 Walmart, they were all able to stay open because they had grocery and they were able to still sell everything. The governor never said you can't sell it. It was illegal for somebody to leave their home to go buy it, but nobody was there to enforce it. So, um, you know, that, that was a, a, a challenge uh, because as we got into the end of April, we were closed until April 25th. On April 23rd, um, we thought the governor was gonna keep us closed until the 1st of June, including all the small greenhouses in the area mm. that sold retail. So that had to be the, that had to be the low light for you watching everybody else open reading my reporting about how great spring is yeah. and and you can't do anything about it and uh, and watching Lowe's and Home Depot selling plants well finally the governor put a kibosh to that and said they couldn't sell plants anymore gardening supplies but they were still selling fertilizer and chemicals because that's not a gardening supply in their store <laughs> so it was just it was a mess. But then uh, two days later, when we expected the announcement that we were gonna be closed till the 1st of June, she said we could open up immediately. And within eight hours, we had our stores back open. And we had a, a great team, uh, great dedicated employees. Some of them were uh, showed up to work uh, within two hours of the announcement because we called everybody and. Um, we had laid everyone off, uh, not knowing what was going to happen. And so they had to be excited. So how did you? How, so how did you? How did you finish up the uh, spring, Dean? Up, uh, down, flat? Where were you? Uh, we are way up, way up. Sales uh, year to date are, I believe, in the uh, just just shy of twenty percent increase year over year, um, and it just been crazy uh, busy and busier than we'll ever see it again, probably. And imagine if you could have opened up at a normal, a normal schedule. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Kate, how did, uh, how did you guys uh, wind up this spring? Uh, we ended up uh, way up, uh, probably 25, 30% um, for spring, uh, which was amazing. Um, and then also um, July, August, we made huge gains. Um, and se September is already, uh, we're already over double what we were last September. So, wow. and that's what I wanted to talk about down. next. Yeah, let's let's talk about say the last sixty days or so, August, September. You know, the end of summer, which is normally a you know terrible time or you know pretty dead. Um, moving into September, tell me a little bit more about what you've seen and what does that mean for you know the rest of the the fall in your mind. So, well, it's just been, it's been busy with like in spring, everybody was saying, oh, every day is a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And it still feels like that today when they call me every night with the sales for the day. It's, those are Saturday numbers. Those are Sunday numbers. And it's a Monday and rain isn't affecting it. It's kind of just still going. Right now, I used to say sky is the limit. Right now I say supply is the limit because <laughs> we're not able to get everything that we could be selling that people are asking for. So um, but I think, yeah, fall and is going to be a record just like spring. And I don't know that we'll be able to repeat it ever in the future, but we'll take the money now. <laughs> and and uh, are, you, are you seeing traffic um, on a daily basis? Like you, every people are coming in any day of the week. It hasn't gone back to a bit of a heavier weekend traffic pattern. Uh, it is busier on the weekend, but we're seeing heavy traffic Monday through Friday too. Like, I've had a really hard time doing these virtual shows and going to panels and stuff because my store's too busy to have me off the floor. And uh, it's kind of, it's a good thing and a, and a bad thing. It, I guess it's a good thing to complain about, but yeah, yeah it's well, been just busy. Mums are flying off like they're the newest thing since toilet paper. <laughs> That's right. AJ, how about, how about you? But the last uh, 60 days or so, what have you seen at the TV? Same thing. Uh, things never really slowed down. So we've been seeing about 40, 45% increases uh, really all the way through the year, um, month over month. And I agree with uh, what Kate said, you know, supply uh, is becoming an issue. It's a little tight, um, looking at supply for next year, um, trying to get anything in for this year, which I'm sure everybody's experiencing. But we're also cleaning through things really well. Patio has been really strong. We've sold 
every stitch of patio that we've got. We're even selling into 2021's supply, whatever we were able to get in for next year. We just put that right on the floor and that's already going. And so we're trying to reload on that. Um, and plants are still moving nursery. I mean, really there's, there's no category that's, that's mm -hmm. lagging. So it's still going really strong. Yeah. So how are you using um, the, res the, the summer results to plan um, the, the next few months or how far out are you actually, you know, thinking about right now with hard planning? So since we're growers, um, we're actually, we're planned through probably about 12 months out right now on the plant side. And so as we're looking at that, what we did, and I don't know if it's right or wrong, um, but we kind of looked at our market, took a look at, you know, what we thought was sustainable, um, what we had a competitive advantage over. Because I think the box stores did a really poor job um, how they handled COVID early on, so that gave us an advantage. Um, but we picked up about 125,000 new customers, um, which is incredible for us. So what's that so on a percentage basis? It's about 27%. And so for us, um, you know, I think we're going to retain a lot of that new customer base. And so it, uh, we're going in next year with pretty much, we're just taking our initial 2020 plan, uh, rinsing, repeating, and then adding about 20, 25% to that. And I think that's going to be hopefully realistic. Yeah. So, what would you normally um, look for, for, for a year over year increase? What percentage? Five three percent. to five yeah five would be great so you're being, so pretty, you're being pretty aggressive yeah right. we still think we're up 43 44 for the year and so i think dropping 20 points and hopefully keeping half of that off our original 2020 plan mm. um sounds realistic so i don't know if we if we're going to see this again um and then looking at you know i had a housing economics thing yesterday you know, they're calling for housing to soften up a little bit. So we might get some tailwinds, you know, based on that. So we'll see what, we'll see what happens. But that's pretty much what we're going in with. And, you know, it's, it's challenging to try to predict the future, you know, after this year and, and looking at what's going on. <laughs> that's kind of why we're here. <laughs> get the crystal no. ball out. Dean, how about your last uh, 60 days or so and, and, and what it makes you think for the future? Yeah. Um, well, again, you know, very interesting. Um, you know, we're a year on business. We stay open uh, 12 months of the year and retain a pretty full staff for those 12 months. Uh, typically, um, we make money five months of the year. We lose money the other seven. Once in a while, there's a swing uh, year where in July you make money, but that doesn't happen very often. Uh, this year, we made money in August and uh, had a positive contribution margin, which never happens in August, uh, never happened in the history of our company. And we're on slate to have a positive contribution margin for September also. So um, uh, very, very interesting, different, uh, different way of doing business. Uh, right now we're working on our business plan for 2021, uh, working on budgeting. Um, and strategies to uh, make sure that um, some of the threats that are out there, uh, that we thwart those and, and make sure that um, uh, we don't get into issues with them. And we're going to dig into that a little bit yeah. more because we mentioned that sort of when we were planning all of this. So, uh, so what does that do for you when you look at the coming holiday season, say Halloween through Thanksgiving and Christmas? So um, fall harvest is a decent season for us, but we, we do a huge uh, Christmas business. And we went from um, having a fairly uh, aggressive plan for Christmas um, 20, um, but we had a little more inventory than we wanted to at the end of uh, 19. Um, in April, I was canceling orders. Um, we, while we were closed, we were anticipating yeah. huge decreases in business. Matter of fact, our, our May projections were, um, originally a 50% reduction in sales. We didn't think people were going to come out. We didn't, we thought everyone was going to stay home. Um, and so we're canceling Christmas orders. And then as soon as we opened up and saw that, um, that wasn't going to be the case, 
And, and we were getting reports from other garden centers around the country that were open, that were seeing uh, decreases in sales. Um, I think Petiti's was one of them. Your early, uh, AJ, your early furniture sales right at the beginning of the pandemic were um, way off of 18 or way off of 19. And we're looking at it going, you know, what are we going to do? So we were canceling Christmas orders. Then we were reinstating Christmas orders and trying to order more to get back up to the original plan. So we look, we're looking to have a phenomenal year. Um, we're we're uh, planning for when we need more product, we're going to try to get more product. I hear mums are impossible to find right now. Kate, is that true? If we, we, we want a little bit of a harbinger for, for fall and, and, and poinsettias, what's going on with the, mums, the mum crops? The mum crop, we grew 14,000 this year, which was about 1,000 less than last year. And um, we had our fundraisers that we always have, they kicked butt this year. It's sold way more than we planned on. So we're probably going to be out after this weekend, we're thinking. Uh, which is really early for us. And uh, I've got people calling almost every day asking if we'll wholesale them. So I've got one little pumpkin farm I've been wholesaling to, but um, I have to cut them off starting tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, so how do you look at um, the rest of the, the holiday season? What are you anticipating and what are you planning? We are planning for another record season. Um, we didn't cancel any of our Christmas orders. Was, vendors were calling this spring saying, do you still want this? Do you still want that? We've taken everything. We actually decided we're gonna decorate even more, provide more photo ops. Uh, we won't have our events, but we're gonna just really try to make it um, a replacement for some of the stuff that is canceled, all of our, our local parade and our festival of trees and uh, those holiday traditions that happen for families every year we're gonna try to be the one tradition that, that they can still count on. So uh, we actually just started uh, yesterday putting up Christmas <laughs> in our greenhouse. You so might as well, you're out of mums. <laughs> and, uh, holiday in the back. We've got, a, we've got a seasonal mullet going on here at Wallace's. <laughs> a seasonal mullet. So, so AJ, all right, you get through uh, Christmas, which I assume you think is gonna be enormous for Petitis. You know, I think so. Things are trending that way. Um, and it's one of the positive things that we've done with COVID is looking at how we merchandise Christmas in the past. And we, you know, have customers shop off our trees and, um, you know, kind of merchandise in a really fantastic kind of presentation. And with COVID, we're, you know, looking at, you know, expanding the aisles. We're pegging a lot more. Um, setups going a lot more quickly and we're showing a lot more merchandise and things are trending up right now so it's going to be it's going to be interesting but i think we're going to have a really strong season are you able to get products because it's it's not just plant material that's uh in short supply in some cases but uh but hard goods gift items how is that looking right now uh we've gotten creative we brought in a bunch of new lines um you know on the lawn and garden side it's challenging on the home side that's actually been okay. Um, you got to hunt and peck and find some new stuff, uh, which we've done. And, you know, that part's looking good. And then Christmas, you know, that stuff was all in a long time ago. Yeah, that is, I guess, one advantage. You have to you have to order and, and uh, bring in these things so early. That, uh, uh, But I also know talking to your dad once, he never kept anything around. I'm sure you do the same thing past Christmas, uh, certainly not till next Christmas. He says, if they didn't buy it last year, why would they buy it, you know, next year? I don't think you expect to have much left hanging on the pegs uh, December 26th. I hope not. I'm looking at the inventories, you know, just looking at how we've done things in the past and how we're doing it now. It looks like there's a lot less inventory that I'm used to seeing um, just because of how we're merchandising it. And so I think it's going to sell a lot better um, just because it's so easy to get. It's so available to the customer. So it should be, uh, you know, it should be interesting. It should be a good season. All right. Kate, looking ahead to spring of 2021, that's sort of the, the, the big unknown. It's pretty far out there. And, you know, you're, you're, having, you're looking at the spring of 2020 thinking, how do I use these numbers to plan? So what is your, your, uh, your outlook for 2021? And specifically, how are you going to plan 2021? I want to say one more quick thing about Christmas that I forgot yeah, to mention. Yeah, sure. Of course. Is that 
Um, also, typically, a lot of times we put away most of our, our spring. We've made arrangements this year to leave it all out because there's a you know how many million new gardeners and they need Christmas presents. So uh, we're leaving out all the gloves, the tools. We're merchandising a huge garden gardener area in our greenhouse uh, so people can still gift um, you know a shovel or new trowels or watering cans all that stuff is not getting hidden for holiday it's going right out and uh, so we're hoping to sell a lot more uh, garden stuff on top of holiday uh, for spring thought, yeah. um, <laughs> for spring the hardest part has been like I said I usually do a lot of planning before the buying shows and this year I've spent so much time trying to buy week to week that I haven't been able to do as much planning as I would like. So uh, like at this show, I feel like I'm shooting from the hip a little more than I would want to, but um, I'm definitely increasing uh, probably um, 15 to 20% on uh, some lines. And uh, plant-wise, we're, we're growers. And so um, we are building a new uh, 9,000 square foot uh, Nexus greenhouse uh, starting in a couple weeks. So um, we're growing up a little bit on annuals and then um, we're, and we're planning uh, probably a, a third semi from Florida instead of just two that we no normally get. We're probably going to bring in a third one for next spring. So Trop tropicals. Yes. Trop tropicals from Florida. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. And um, what do you, what are you thinking for, uh, for her herbs and veggies? Herbs and herbs is going up for sure. And then uh, veggies. Uh, last year, we kind of went way up uh, and went really wide. Uh, this year, we're going to narrow selection back a little bit so we can be deeper on uh, some of the tomatoes and peppers. But uh, definitely, um, we, uh, we have plans to uh, fill the new greenhouse mostly with uh, herbs and veggies. There you go. Dean, 2021 at English Gardens. How do you approach it? Well, uh, really interesting. Um, we've done a lot of planning. Um, some interesting things we're working on right now with some of our growers to make sure that we have product next year is we're actually calling and um, with our orders that we're placing, offering deposits for those goods, uh, actually prepaying them. And we think that's gonna go a long way uh, and them making sure that we get what we order because a lot of them didn't have a great year. Uh, a lot of them had some losses early and um, they weren't able to replant as much and, and do second and third crops. And so we're, we're looking to uh, uh, share the wealth a little bit that, you know, we're, had, we're, we're so fortunate that we are having the kind of year we're having, we wanted to spread that out a little bit. And we have yeah. had some growers take us up on that. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, just um, looking, you know, looking at our biggest threat right now is the supply, um, like Kate was talking about. Supp supply is the limit. So what about, a, what percentage increase are you looking at um, for next spring? How much, how much are you planning to be up over, um, we're projecting, 2019. yeah, we're projecting flat, but we have to bake in the 32 days we're closed. So it'll be up. Uh, we're going to use flat numbers to 19 on those days we were closed. And um, I haven't done the calculation of what percentage that is, but mm -hmm. at this point it'll get revised uh, often. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what does your gut tell you though you've been in this business a long time what's your yeah. gut tell you 2021 is going to be like um i, I don't see a, a lot different um I, I guess um you know if somebody could predict that everyone's going to be back to work in their offices next year um by may um probably be a little different answer um as we continue to uh, string this out and now they're talking about a possible vaccine in April um, and and if it came in April you know is everyone going to go get it and feel like they can return to normal immediately I think this is going to take take some time it, uh, I, I think we might be looking you know 12 to 24 more months from now 
before we're even thinking about some type of normalcy. And um, so that, with that being said, you know, I, I think the, the business will continue to be strong because people are, aren't doing anything. Yeah. Uh, AJ, how about, let's talk specific categories within your store for spring 2021. Um, <laughs> what's going to be extra strong? What, what do you think might be soft or you won't be as aggressive with? Or is everything going to be amazing? I think we're going to continue. I agree with Dean. Um, you know, for us, I don't know if it'll be as strong as what we had this year. I mean, we had an exceptional year. Um, but I think 25% above what we plan on for 2020 is a really solid number. Um, and, you know, annuals, the plants, I think, are still really strong. You know, we can see that with mums. You can see that with everything else that's out there. Um, Gardening-related. Uh, vegetable gardening, we saw, like, a 100% increase in. Mm. That, I think, will dial back a little bit. Um, some people tried it. Some had success. Some didn't. Um, but really, the plant categories uh, and patio, I think, are all going to be strong going through. Yeah. I mean, do you worry that, that, that everybody fixed up their patio this past year and so they won't need to fix it up? Or do you think that's going to, that it sounds like you think that's going to be a continuing trend, the whole home improvement, garden improvement thing? I think it's going to continue. If there, if, if this continues, I think that'll continue. Um, you know, it's the same thing with pottery. You know, pottery, when just when, how many pots can you sell? And you can always sell more pots. So it just, um, you know, it seems like there's people that just, you know, when they're old sets, reach end of life or, you know, with all the new homes that were bought this year, you know, maybe they didn't get a patio set this year. You know, they were waiting till next year. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of new customers out there. All right. Kate, what do you think about hot categories, soft categories? Uh, House plants continues to explode for us. Um, so uh, hence bringing in more from Florida again. Um, <clears throat> and we've actually started growing a lot more of our own because of the supply problems and the shortages, we started buying houseplant plugs and doing cuttings. And uh, as my dad says, going back to the early 80s when he used to grow his own houseplants back then. <laughs> so that category is still big. Patio furniture has been huge for us this year. Um, we have increased our buying. Uh, typically, we see patio furniture every other year. One year is a big year, and the next year is a little softer. And uh, we're planning on next year, <clears throat> even though this year was a record, we're planning on uh, even more so. Um, worried about the supply chain in that, just in their, a lot of their manufacturing lead times are a lot longer than they used to be. So uh, trying to get those orders in. And then um, pottery, <clears throat> we continue to buy more and more pottery all the time. That seems to be no end in sight. So um, those are, are really hot categories for us. And uh, soil and rock, I think a lot of customers discovered us uh, again where you know they always just kind of relied on Home Depot and Walmart to grab their topsoil and stuff like that and uh, with those guys running out um, more so than we did this year um, we never ran out and so um, I think a lot of people kind of rediscovered us as I'm like oh yeah not only can I buy it here but they'll put it in my car for me or they'll deliver it and dump it in my driveway so right service um, so I think the the hard good outdoor goods um, is going to be a good category for us too all right Dean you had brought up um, challenges um, and threats moving forward and you specifically said su supply chain talk a little bit about what you're worried about uh, but more importantly what are you going to do about it yeah the um, you know We've been talking to some of the manufacturers and, and frankly, I'm more concerned about domestic manufacturing than, than uh, overseas manufacturing. Um, when I'm talking to people in China that I buy direct from, um, there's not a big issue over there. They're, they're humming along and, and still producing stuff. Uh, none of my Christmas orders were late. Um, we're seeing a little bit of a backlog uh, and orders uh, and furniture. But I think domestically, things like fertilizer and chemicals and um, the, the domestic factories that can't get up to speed, they're running multiple shifts, but they can't put enough people in their factory to produce an, enough product. And I uh, just got off the phone with uh, one of them a few minutes right before the call and he was saying the same thing. Uh, so looking at uh, less just-in-time 
uh, inventory on those kind of products uh, and bringing more in up front to make sure we don't run out. And that's uh, really a, a strategy. Um, it, you, we can't do it with everything, but um, with soils, we're doing that. And that's gonna be a little bit of a struggle because it takes up some room. But potting soils are pretty high margin things. Topsoil, we're not gonna do that with, but with potting soil and some of the, the, the more popular chemicals that we were having a hard time getting, um, we're gonna we're gonna load up and um, uh, you know be use our use our uh, profits from this year f to invest in merchant you know inventory for next year. Mm -hmm. Right, you better get it before AJ does, because so, <laughs> you know he's on the phone. <laughs> AJ, what about um, threats or or worries that that that, uh, that you're thinking about for next spring? Yeah. Uh, supplies definitely. I think we've covered that pretty well. I think Dean's right on with everything that he said. Um, you know, I think the housing market, if what I heard today was true, um, is something we're going to pay close attention to, um, to see what happens within housing. Um, you know, obviously external political factors, um, you know, I think with the election year being passed us, I think that'll be a real positive, um, you know, where things will start stabilizing a little bit, but, you know, COVID depending on you know, policies, whatever, uh, the lawmakers decide to impose, uh, depending on where that goes, um, is still a threat because we don't have any idea and we don't have any control of it. Um, I don't see it getting worse than it was this year. If we were open during the lockdown, I think we'll be open. If there's another lockdown, I think we'll be open during that. Um, How about you know, labor the, for you? Because you've got uh, nine stores. You've got a you've got a staff seven days a week. Is that where you at so all? So we were. I was terrified of that in March. Uh, when this came out, I was terrified. And actually, we had one of the best recruiting classes uh, we've ever had. So, um, you know, we're really blessed. We've got a, a really great team, uh, really low turnover. So, um, you know, hopefully we, we get that fortune again uh, next year. And how much did, of your profits did you spend on plexiglass for cash register areas? And <laughs> We, we did as much as we could to make sure that, you know, our team was safe and then make sure, you know, we were being compliant and, uh, and it worked out really well. We got a lot of praise uh, from, you know, from the communities, from our customers, so, uh, and from our team members. So everybody is pretty happy. We, we do an engagement survey every year and that's going out. So I'll get a better idea how everybody feels about it uh, when we get the, uh, the results back. All right. Kate, what are you most worried about uh, for 2021? Um, probably supply, like we've talked about, um, labor a little bit. I was able to hire some really awesome people this year. Um, but, uh, the thing that frustrates me most with labor is right now, anybody, you know, if they wake up sick, you know, um, they can't come in at all. And, uh, and then they've got to get a test and then they've got a quarantine. And so, um, we've hired some really great people, but at the same time, um, I only have one store to deal with, but I also, you know, try to keep my labor pool as small as possible. Um, and so uh, this year we've had a lot of days where, um, where all of a sudden, you know, someone calls in, oh, my, my sister's positive and now I've got a test and I won't be there for, you know, up to 10 days or 14 days. So, um, so I don't know how that's going to go going forward. Um, if you just hire more and, and eat the payroll or, so that is always on my mind. And then um, online sales, I, my website went up quick and dirty uh, this spring like everybody else's. And I really want to get that option up and going um, better uh, than, than last year. And I, I just can't seem to prioritize the time to get to get on it. So that's a specific category I wanted to ask all of you about. And that is online because it's saved many businesses, especially early on, online and, and curbside pickup, those two kind mm -hmm. of things in combination. Um, yeah, you said you had to scramble to build something. Did you have zero um, <laughs> um, online we, sales capability or what happened? Uh, at the time we were selling only gift cards online. So, um, so I was able to throw up my hard goods, my soils mulch uh, pretty quickly, but 
uh, the plants was just daunting. And then obviously it wasn't integrated with inventory. So, you know, we'd have all of our tomatoes and herbs up there and then all of a sudden you're selling out of it so fast and then you get an online order for it. And um, it's another store and, uh, and was not prepared for it before and would like to get, you know, a little more processed down and, and routine down with that. And so, so what's your, what's your plan for online sales moving forward? Is this going to be a permanent part of the business or is it just an emergency part in case of another pandemic? No, it's going to be, I mean, we, I just took a mulch order this morning online. Somebody ordered a truckload of mulch delivered today. So we're still continuing it. Um, so basically just expanding, getting more of the inventory on there. Um, with the live goods part of it being the most challenging thing. I do anticipate getting pretty much lawn and garden hard goods online um, pretty much all the time. Uh, our home decor uh, and gift section, which is fairly extensive, um, will probably be the last piece of that that I would ever try to integrate because it just changes so quickly and, and we don't go deep in anything. So, And is this only for local pickup or are you getting orders from, um, you know, Transylvania or Schenectady or something like that saying, so ship me some mulch. We shipped this year. I had somebody that wanted some raised bed mix shipped to Oklahoma and because uh, they couldn't find it anywhere nearby. And uh, we ended up getting a freight quote for them and then they ended up <laughs> finding it from a neighbor or something. But yeah, we will ship stuff, but uh, ideally just local pickup and local delivery. All right. Dean, how about the English Gardens and your online yeah. business? So we've been selling um, Christmas online for about five years. Uh, Life like trees, wreaths, garlands, and Christmas lights. And we expanded that into some other decor and ornamentation last year, but really never did anything for spring other than gift cards and then uh, any of our uh, events. Um, <clears throat> our plan for 20 was that we were um, developing a new website, finding a, a new website provider. And um, eventually we were going to start working on expanding our uh, spring online presence uh, with click and pick um, or shop online for delivery. Uh, that obviously got immensely uh, accelerated when we got closed down because we were able to put all our merchandisers on working on the internet um, project. And I figured yeah, I was going to say you at least had the time to do it because there's nothing else happening, right? We did. And uh, we had some help from some really great people and uh, some of our merchandisers and, and, and our marketing department. And we got everybody working on it and we're continuing to work on it. Um, Photography is the hardest thing because you got to have a picture if you want to sell it and and getting that all done. We're continuing to do that um, for a lot of spring categories and, and then wrapping up the Christmas. But um, we have uh, several thousand things already uh, online and we do ship um, anywhere in the country. Um, so we're we're not advertising. Uh, that way, um, but we do take quite a few orders for Christmas products, mostly from people that know us from being in the Metro Detroit area and then moving away and not being able to find what we provide in their market. And uh, they go on online or they'll call us and we'll take a phone order and ship it too. All right, so that so you're going to continue growing that online business. Oh, absolutely yeah, for the future. Yeah, so, how about and AJ? How about you? How how uh, how'd your online experience go, and what's your plan for it? Actually, we were pretty similar to Kate. Uh, we were just doing gift cards online. Uh, we had redone our website last year, um, so we had a great interface. Um, we're with Epicor, so we brought in the iNet and just did that application. So they was able to plug right into um, the new website and it's been up and running for probably about two months now. Um, and it's doing well, it's doing okay. All right. And so we're seeing good traffic. What, what percentage of your sales do you think uh, have been and, and maybe uh, online? How, how important a business right now, it's still uh, department teeny, will that be for tiny. you? Yeah, it's still really small. So I think it's something that'll grow and develop, um, especially as it gets more traction. Um, you know, we brought it in 
late in the season, and really the main reason why we put it in place was if we saw a second lockdown for Christmas, um, we brought it in as an insurance policy for Christmas. Mm. And so, um, but we were able to launch it early, and um, we're seeing good traction. But really the, the, the focus is getting Christmas loaded up into it, and then, you know, that way if something does happen, uh, we've got a good outlet to, you know, to sell our product through. And then it'll be there for next year and in years to come. Yeah, I know a, a Swiss Garden Center owner who'd put off online sales because he couldn't justify the tremendously high cost of it. And he gr- regretted that when this all went down. Now he sees it as, a, you know, as a safety net um, in case of something like this happening. Kate, something you brought up when we were chatting earlier was events. And how do you host events during a pandemic? Have you got real good at Zoom? I, I, you know, we haven't done any events. Uh, we, we, we usually do seminars all January through April, um, and we ended up canceling those in March. Uh, and we usually do a huge fall festival, uh, which we're not doing. And actually, I wrote down in my notes for today, I wrote down events. Do we even need them? Um, before it was events would drive sales, right? You'd bring all these people in, they'd come and they'd come to the pumpkin patch and then buy a couple mums and some other things. And then, um, and it's a lot of extra work on top of normal day-to-day business. And this year, obviously, you know, we're killing it in sales. We can barely keep stuff on the shelves and we're not doing any of that. So, you know, I, I start to wonder if, you know, do we need to bring some of that stuff back or, you know, does it go away? I, I enjoy a lot of the events, but it is a lot of extra work. So um, right now, that's a big question mark for us. Um, for fall, right immediately, we, um, we usually have a big weekend fall festival with a train and bounce houses, and we do caramel apples and popcorn and hot dogs and all of that. Obviously, none of that um, is happening this year. So we actually just decorated the, our whole outside of our store really, really big, made a huge pumpkin patch, put up lots of photo ops and are just encouraging people to come on their own time. And instead of, you know, one day or two days where we're cramming everybody in, um, it's just kind of a season long process, hoping to give them some of that tradition uh, without, uh, without the crowds and the, and the safety issues with COVID. Mm-hmm. AJ, you brought up something earlier, and that was you have 125,000 new Petiti customers, and you think you'll keep a lot of them. What, uh, a big question is, what do we do to retain all these new gardeners who discovered us for the first time this year? What are your thoughts Honestly, on that? Honestly, if you haven't done it already, it's too late. Um, you know, it's, it was a lot of new homeowners. It was a lot of... Um, you know, new gardeners, a lot of young families that, you know, were getting into gardening, the, the box stores just weren't appealing to, to shop at is where I think a lot of our customer base came from. Um, and if they had a bad experience out the gate, it's already, you know, that part, you lost that war. Mm-hmm. So uh, we, we made a really good, strong focus on, you know, the basics, customer service. If there's any problem, you know, we just took care of any issues that they would have. Um, you know, we just, really bent over backwards to make sure that you know everybody this year had a good experience uh, had a lot of great feedback from our customers so hopefully that, that did it um you know obviously you can market to them we've got their information we could do a lot of push and pull marketing there but um i think it boils down to the experience they had before you even knew that they were they were there do you think it's less important that they're successful in their garden and more important that they enjoyed their time buying whatever it is they bought Oh no, they have to be successful. They All right. So, so is there any? Uh, so, is there anything that we as an industry can do? Uh, this question is to all of you to help those gardeners. Now we're getting later on in the season. Maybe you know it's a done deal, but to help them be successful with these these first time plant purchases. So we focus a lot on training our teams, and so that training that we did in February and March should have translated to better sales and success for our customers. Um, coming down and I think that makes a big difference. It's stuff that you have to, you know, you have to take care of it before you, you get into the season. Like selling um, them the right thing kind of and making yeah, sure they have all sure. the tools they need, fertilizer, the instructions, etc. Exactly. If you plant, if you buy a hydrangea and plant it without amending the soil, it's really hard to go back and amend the soil after you plant the hydrangea. 
So really making sure that they're successful up front. Um, and then, like I said, you know, we do a lot of follow-up emails with our customers, uh, you know, when to do, you know, when to prune, when to, um, you know, whatever you have to do to your, your bush or shrub that you purchased. Uh, we do a lot of email blasts. We do um, a lot of television. Um, I'm on the local news, so I was on the morning news this morning. Um, just telling people how to take care of their plants and just focusing on education and, and doing that. All right, beautiful. Dean, what are your thoughts on keeping these first time, these newbies? Well, um, you know, the customer experience and being relevant is important. And um, the that was really the main drive of, of getting our website up. And whether we were selling online or just cataloging, and we ended up being able to sell online. Um, but that it's, it's our local shopper. That's how they want to shop. And um, now the, and that, that's how you're going to attract the younger uh, millennials uh, into this uh, category. I, I think um, what we're all seeing with houseplants, even uh, before the pandemic, had a lot to do with uh, the new customers. And uh, I just continue to see that develop. It's, it's the in thing. It's, it's, um, something that will continue to grow you're gonna you're gonna have some drop off but i i think there's probably a potential for way more growth than there is for the little bit of drop off that we may have i i don't think we've even um hit the uh hit the the mass amount of people that um could be uh, you know getting into gardening yeah, well, let's hope you're right. And one, someone said in the previous panel I did for BFG that um, we did not um, find them. They found us. We were not advertising back in March and April, come to our garden center during the pandemic. We were <laughs> just trying to survive or hunker down. They found us, which I think yeah. bodes well for them to continuing to, uh, to find us. Um, Kate, any silver linings? out of everything that, that you have been through that, um, that you're going to carry with you until this whole mess is just a distant, distant memory? I, I have a lot of silver linings. Um, like I said earlier with my team, like this spring, I, I mean, we just found out, you know, who's going to be with you through thick and thin, who thinks of my business as their own business as well. Um, so that was a silver lining. Also, um, Pricing. I, this was the year to raise prices. I hope you all raised your prices this year. Um, so um, raise your prices without looking back, less sales. Um, you know, typically this time of year we would have, you know, sometimes, you know, certain trees up 50% off. And this year I just don't have the product. I, you know, we're getting full price for everything still. So um, that's a silver lining. And then there's a lot of um, little things. I've always harped on everybody about a clean store that women don't shop at dirty stores so um but having COVID around we clean even more so um so now I don't seem like quite as much of a nag about the cleaning and um <laughs> the governor said so the yeah, CED the said, governor so. said well not the Iowa governor but um <laughs> and um probably lastly just a few of the little processes like we you know rearranging your check out and how the customer um, now where we put their cart and how we box their items and stuff. We actually, about two weeks into being reopened, I looked at my front counter manager and I said, this way is better. And he goes, yeah, it's way better. He's like, we're not going back. And so there's a few things we've looked at and said, we're not going back. This is, this is way better. So um, being forced into those changes uh, sometimes is a good thing. Yeah. AJ, how about you? Silver linings and things you're going to continue doing you know reiterating what kate said you know really and it was you know our entire team just stepped up all the way so seeing that was just awesome um you know looking at how we're doing christmas i'm excited to see how that translates into future sales because you know it went it took a ton for us to merchandise that christmas i've been um, to your place at christmas time <laughs> It's beautiful, yeah, it's, but yeah, you start is. back in like Mother's Day to do that, I'm sure. Yeah, it to, to get it done. Um, and it's also hard, you know, it's difficult for customers to find if they want two or three of one ornament, 
you know, they have to hunt and peck for a long time where now they can just grab it. So I walk around the stores now and I'm a little paranoid that we don't have enough inventory, um, which doesn't happen that often, but it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting. Um, and it's good. We, we went to garden centers in Italy last November to see their Christmas and um, they were doing it the same way. So they had most of it pegged with some nice mannequins around and, and a lot of um, theater around that. But when it came to selling ornaments, it was just down to business. It was no different than selling, you know, Roundup. It's on a peg, it's on a hook, and it's there for you to buy. Um, so we're adapting that model now more so. And uh, I think that's something that's going to be really good. Um, I think those are the biggest takeaways uh, from this year. And actually, one other uh, that we're going to do, we did a call center um, throughout spring. So uh, we pulled uh, team members into our corporate <laughs> office. Um, to alleviate the, the phone burden from the stores. And so we had experienced, you know, some of our more experienced people on those phones. Um, and so we learned a lot about our customers, um, what they were looking for, because talking to a customer service person at the store while they're doing 10 other things, you don't get that feedback of what's actually happening. You know, having an experienced person helping a new customer and being able to really take time and, and get them to where they need to be um, gardening wise made a big difference. So I think that's something that we're going to continue on as well. Yeah. I think, I th do you think customers were really almost extra forgiving of us when it came to say customer service or other things, because everybody was in this together and they're not going to be that kind next year as they get really fed up. Kate, you're, you're smiling about that one. Everybody's smiling. Is that a concern? That we've got to sort of up our game when it comes to social distancing and traffic flow and all those things that we just sort of, sh you know, shoved out there this spring. I our think customers were actually. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I, our customers were were great all the way through. Um, they were. But will really, they continue really to be? Will patient. they continue to be that patient? I hope so. <laughs> so. Or do we, we have I mean, to up did, our game? We did as much as we could to, to expedite those lines. Um, and really, the longest lines they got was about 10 minutes long. Um, so we, we did a lot of, you know, checking people out early and as much as line busting, all the other stuff that we could possibly do. Okay. Um, well, they were, they were pretty forgiving this spring. Um, they're starting to get back to a little bit the way they were before. I think one thing that it's another silver lining that is actually helping with the customer service thing is the refocus, I think nationwide on shopping local and supporting your mom and pops. And um, <clears throat> so there's a lot of, I know a lot of people that have come in and said like, oh, I've never been here before, but I want to shop local now. And I think people really this year started to see the importance of supporting businesses in your community. I know that happened with our restaurants here right off the bat. And um, so I think that we're getting a lot more people that are like, well, I'm going to shop local. I'm not going to go to a box store. But at the same time, they do still expect the service from a local business that they don't expect when they go to Costco or Home Depot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all buying on Amazon too, and there's nothing local about that. <laughs> Dean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap up, well, sort of wrap up with you. You brought up a very interesting strategy for sort of protecting English gardens just in case, and that's an essentials, essentials departments. Tell yeah. us about that real briefly. So our, our governor allowed essential businesses to be open, and um, when she shut down all of other retailers and some of those um, pet stores, automotive supply stores, because you had to fix your car and um, also um, cleaning supplies. And so we decided to put some of those essential departments in, not a huge footprint, um, but again, just um, a little bit for an argument that we have pet food, we have automotive supplies, we have cleaning supplies, and also cannabis growing supplies, which BFG is a great partner on. And um, there's probably thousands of items in your store that you could use to grow cannabis and just highlight those um, because the governor in our state allowed the grow shops to stay open and we were forced to close. So uh, again, uh, just a, a way to possibly 
uh, stay open once, uh, if, if, and God, I hope it doesn't happen. Let's, let's hope you never have to use that strategy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. last word is going to go to AJ because he, he hinted at, um, what the re- what the real hot seller is right now. Kate said she bought some at your store. What was that? <laughs> oh, socks. Socks. Um, amazing, amazing how many socks we sell. And who's the, who's the vendor of those socks? Can we reveal that or are you keeping it all to yourself? Keep, keep it under wraps. <laughs> Kate knows because she bought some. Otherwise, yeah. you got to go to Petiti's, buy some yep. socks. You'll find out the brand. Um, and there you go. So there's your hot tip for the day. Uh, Joe, uh, that's all I've got. And I didn't see any questions come in other than one anonymous attendee who said, great discri- discussion and great comments. And I concur. Thanks so much, you guys, for being so, uh, so open and sharing with the industry. Thanks for having us, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Guys, it was very good. Um, Join us tomorrow. Chris will be back. He'll be talking about plant new varieties for plants for 2021. Um, Now, a few things about our show. Um, The benefits of attending the BFG show, as I said before, if you place pre-show orders, there's an additional 2% on most orders placed. Um, you'll have May 2021 terms on most orders. Um, there are pallet alley deals, daily lunch specials, pallet auction, and more. And just a reminder, again, tomorrow Chris Beatty's will be back with us with his garden, or by himself tomorrow with the new varieties. And I promise it'll be interesting. <laughs> yes, I'm sure it will be. Everything else has been. Thank you very much, Chris. And everybody have a good day. Take care. See you, everybody.